Hey, friends, welcome back to the Called to Lead podcast. So, I'm actually recording this episode from my amazing sister in law, Elaine Burge. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see her sign behind me. I'm recording it from her studio in Sandersville, Georgia. She's going to meet me here, and we're headed to Atlanta to see one of my favorite bands in concert. But I'm really excited to dive into today, to today's episode, which is all about the investment strategy of growing your network marketing business by growing your following on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, your website, all of the different places by treating your business like a business. So Elaine is not a network marketing. She is an artist, like an actual like painter artist. She also makes incredible jewelry. You can see some of her first pieces if you're watching this video behind me. And she's built an amazing following and an amazing business online by sharing the value that she that her product brings in a couple of different ways. So it's cool that I'm here and am able to use her example. And speaking of examples, I'm going to be sharing some examples that you guys can go look up for each of the different places that you might be considering starting or focusing on growing a following based around your product or business. Or maybe you already are on some of these platforms like Pinterest or YouTube or TikTok or Instagram, but you're not really sure what your strategy should be. So today's going to be all about the investment strategy, which just so you guys know, is definitely one of, you've been listening to my series so far, it's definitely one of the more challenging strategies to take on and know that if you choose to do this, you absolutely can build your business by sharing the value of your product consistently and focusing on your customer and how your problem or your product is going to solve their problem, you absolutely can build your business that way. But it, because it's not easy to build a following online, if you do choose to take this as your strategy, know that it might be a little bit more difficult for your team to duplicate it. So there are other options if you want to check out the other three strategies, which are the ignore method, which is not using social media at all. The integrate method, which is what I'm now choosing to use, which is mixing your product and your life on your personal feed and foregoing starting a completely separate account on any of the platforms, just combining them together. Anybody can do that. That is where I recommend most people to start. And then the last one that we've already talked about is the influencer strategy. So that's where, in fact, Elaine, she actually teeters between these two because she is just a bright, bubbly human that people just absolutely love to follow. She lives in a tiny little town outside of Sandersville, Georgia. She's got chickens, two beautiful daughters, and just a beautiful home. And so she is definitely one that can play up some of the aspects of her life in her in her social media followings. But anyway, the influencer strategy is focusing on your brand, building your personal brand. You are the center of it. That's what people come to is to know what you like what you want to share, the value that you provide versus the investment strategy is all centered around your business, your product and treating whatever product or service that you share with your network marketing company, treating it just like you would if you owned your own small business. Okay. So let's buckle up and dive into today's episode and get right into the basics. And then I'm going to share specifically the strategies for the different models that you might be considering. So again, that's going to be YouTube or maybe starting your own website. Or maybe you're wondering, do I start a separate Instagram handle? Or do I do a business page versus a private group? Or do I just use my personal feed? So I hope to answer those questions and again, give you some tangible examples along the way. Just to start out, basically, I want to focus on two keywords that I would say define this particular method or strategy of growing a following online by centering around your product. And those two words are your customer has to be the focus and you've got to be consistent because consistency and it's going to take, this is a long game. If you're trying to build a following on YouTube, if you're trying to grow your website or start a blog or maybe even a podcast, I wasn't planning to talk about podcasting because it's one that I can speak from experience isn't necessarily going to bring you a lot of new business, maybe connections, maybe trust, rapport, but it's going to take a lot of time. I've been podcasting for almost two years collectively, and just now am I really starting to see the traction take off. So you are going to focus on your customer and you're going to focus on consistency with all of these, but I'll get specifically into each of the different platforms here in a second. So when it comes to your customer, 
I am going to pull in a little bit of wisdom that I learned when I had my boutique, my business, and dove into the marketing for what that looked like. I stumbled across Donard, Donald Miller and his story brand book and his teachings. And he has a podcast now called Business Made Simple. And it's definitely something that I re recommend you guys check out. But the premise of what he teaches, and this is so important for any small business owner, and definitely if you're choosing to posture yourself as a business online and grow a following based around it, you're going to need to keep this in mind. It can be very tempting for us as the business owner or us as the business to make ourselves the hero of the story. So in every hero, there's all, or in every story, there's always a hero, there's a villain. And so we tend to make ourselves the hero. You have to realize that in business, the customer has to be your hero. So what do I mean by that? It can be really tempting if you are a leader in network marketing or you have aspirations or maybe you are just starting your business and you're really excited about starting your business. It can be really tempting to make it about you to where you say, I'm starting this new business or I'm XYZ rank at XYZ company. Guess what? Your customer doesn't know what that is. She doesn't care. She cares about what's in it for her. She needs to be the star of the show and she needs to be the one that you're helping improve her life by sharing what you have to offer. And so whether you're just starting out or you're a top leader, you've got to keep that thing in mind. Now, I'm not saying you have to hide your company name in your bio or that you can't be proud when and if you hit a rank in your company. You guys know I did an episode specifically around what it looked like to, to hit a pretty big rank and a goal in my business. But I was doing it coming from the place of, here's what I've learned. Let me tell you both the good and the bad and the hard of that in hopes that it can help serve you in your business. So that's an example of there is a time and a place for you to share maybe the awards that you get. I know Elaine, my sister-in-law, was she was one of the Bulldog 100 of the 100 fastest growing companies of Georgia, University of Georgia Bulldog alumni. And that's an amazing thing for her to share on her story. But if she were constantly just focused on herself versus on inspiring her customers with how a beautiful painting or a, an amazing piece of jewelry could brighten their day, help them feel beautiful. I love her jewelry because it's like wearable art. And so you have to make your customer the center of everything that you do. This is not about you. It's about what you have to offer for your customer that can transform their life, that can solve their problem. And when you can specifically think of, okay, who is that? And more than likely, she's going to be similar to you. And you're going to, when I share some of these examples, you're going to see some of these might be like a mature 60 plus woman who is speaking to other mature 60 plus women. Or maybe if you're using a platform like TikTok, it might be talking to other Gen Z entrepreneurs who are also having fun on TikTok and they want to know how to build a business around that. But essentially, it's putting the focus on how what you have to offer can transform your customers rather than showcasing all the things that make you. That would be more the influencer strategy, which is really hard to do. And so for that reason, because anybody can start a business or start a business page, I should say, or a separate Instagram, it's as easy as just clicking start, add, whatever, or go to YouTube channel, start channel, start a blog. You can do it. You're going to have to follow the steps to make it happen, but anybody can do it. The tricky part is getting the people to follow you, getting the, the growth that is necessary to make that bigger funnel. Remember, we've talked about on this podcast that this is all about picking your path and filling that funnel. And so if you want to choose this strategy, you're going to have a lot of followers to whittle down to the next step in your business. So just keep that. In. And it all starts by putting the focus on the customer. And then that other C word, consistency. This is, again, going to have to be your goal with this. You cannot, you have to marry the process, divorce the results, as I always say, and you cannot assume, you know, that you're going to put in 30 days of this or even 90 days of hard work and effort and reap the fruit of the labor. So you better enjoy whatever it is, whatever that consistency looks like, if it's learning to create reels, if it's creating content for a platform like YouTube, if it's making graphics for something like Instagram. Or maybe it's writing for something like a blog. If you don't enjoy those and if you haven't been naturally gifted in whatever those skill sets and strategies, you're not going to have fun with it. It's going to feel more like a job than it is business. And if that is you, after, say, 90 days of doing this, and you're like, this is just not fun. I don't feel like I'm cut out for this. I don't have joy in doing this. Then you can know, let's pick a different strategy and let's maybe go back to the integrate strategy, which is, again, something that will work for everybody. And there's 
a whole other episode, multiple episodes, and pretty much what this entire podcast talks about is that strategy. But let's dive in to some, let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five different platforms that I'm going to talk specifically about if you choose to start or share your business or build a following around this, some tips and tricks and some examples of people who are doing it beautifully and building their network marketing business alongside it. So we're going to start with the first one, which is a website. So this is a question that I I hear a lot or an assumption that people, maybe if they join the team of someone who has a website, they think, oh, I need to make a website too. And actually, right when I first made my business website, this was several years ago, I remember I had a rock star leader join me. And guess what? She immediately felt like before she even posted about her love for the makeup or about the product, she was like, oh, I got to get ready. I've got to I've got to make a a website and I have to put all my things on there and then I can post about it. I see this all the time where people think they've got to take all these elaborate steps to get started in their business, almost as if they were starting a traditional business, right? If they were having to get a business license and sign a lease on a space and again, develop a, a website. The best part about network marketing is you don't need any of that, my friends. It doesn't mean that you can't have it or that it can't help you build your business, but you just don't need it. So you have to remember that if you're choosing to build something like a website for yourself, which this is a great strategy for someone if you have multiple facets of your business. So maybe you are um, a hairstylist and you do bridal makeup. Maybe you do have a podcast or a YouTube channel, or maybe you do coaching on the side and you want to have people to be able to go to your website, but you have a product, you've signed up with a network marketing company, and you also want to share that. You can make your product a facet of your website and you can point people to it in a way that's both effective, but you also have to remember that's not going to duplicate to 95% or less of your team when they join. So you just have to know you're going to have to be a parent to say, don't don't necessarily do what I did. You don't have to have this. This is because I have multiple facets of my business and this is how I'm choosing to run it because there is freedom in the business. So you just have to know and be able to point them to systems and examples. And this goes with any of them. You're going to have to be able to share examples of someone who's doing it in a different way because not everybody's going to want to do it in the way that you do it. So again, a website is a great fit if you have multiple facets of your business. And if you want to grow your website, you're going to really need to focus on things like your SEO, your search engine optimization, things like keywords, or even like what the title of your website are going to be really important you're going to think, what is my customer searching for? What is she looking for? Is it a local uh, distributor with your company? Is she looking for troubleshooting with your product? Is she looking maybe for information on how to grow within your company? What are the things that your customer is literally typing into Google? Because you want your website to be one of the first things that pulls up. And so SEO is not, you guys, and this is why it's called the investment strategy. You can literally pay people to help you with this. And sometimes it's a waste of money. Sometimes I've even heard of stories. In fact, I think it was Joellen that I'm going to share. She's a beautiful example in our company, Joellen Woods. She has a beautiful website. And I hope she doesn't mind me sharing this. But I know she invested a heavy sum in doing some tweaks to her website. Well, they broke some of her links that were going to Pinterest and it actually wound up costing her money in the reduced sales. So she slowly but surely built her business back up, but that was really frustrating because she, what was meant to be an investment in her business wound up costing her money. So you have to be really smart, which again is one of the reasons why this is not easy, okay? The SEO in terms of building your website, meaning what people are searching for, making sure that your language matches that is huge. And if you are looking for someone to help you with this, Actually, one of my recent customers, her name's Teresa Murphy, and I'm sure we'll do a podcast episode on this down the road, but literally her company Thrive is, this is literally what they do. So I'll drop her information if you want to learn more about it. I'm going to be meeting with her, working with her just to learn a little bit more about it. And she took one look at my website and saw three things off the bat that could be tweaked and changed. And she said, she's, listen, you can look on YouTube and you can find the information on how to do this yourself, but if you don't have the time, or maybe you are making bank in your network marketing business and you're like, I I have a justifiable business expense to pay someone to help me with this, then by all means, go for it. But know that if you want to start a website, that it's not necessary, that it might be difficult for your girlies who think they need one when they definitely don't, when most people don't. And then you are going to make your major focus here on things like your SEO and the keywords. 
And what's cool about a website is it can also be a portal for something like a blog. So I'm not going to go too much into blogs specifically with this, but I know Jo Ellen does great with this because it is very keyword rich. Every time she's writing about something, that is telling Google and the other search engines exactly giving them the answer or even the AI. You guys, AI is definitely going to be huge and things like chat GPT, is that what a GPT? And Bard. I am, have been playing around with Bard and I've even been searching things like who are the top leaders in Saint? And it will literally print out an article within seconds, not print out, but you can print it out, but it'll pull up an article. And I was like, wow, where are they? Where is Bard or Google getting this information with some of these leaders? And Joellen was one of the ones that pulled up. And it's because she has really worked hard to focus on things like SEO on her blog that lives on her website. Joellen also has done really well with Pinterest. And so when she creates her content for her blog, she then puts it on pin, Pinterest. She puts a pin on, on Pinterest, which when people are searching, because that's another search engine, essentially, they're going to find their way back to her website, which is then going to point them to where they can get a free color match for the makeup, or they can purchase that product directly right there from the link on her website, which again, drives the Google al algorithms to to bring more people to her website because she's passing around. The links are coming to her. She's sending the links to other places. And that's what the web world loves. So a website can be great if you're looking to take advantage of things like that, or if you want to take advantage of advertising, like on things like Google AdWords. Most companies, including ours, you can't advertise your actual web, like your shopping link website, because you don't own that particular link. And plus, it puts you at a little bit of a disadvantage or of an advantage. <laughs> it puts others at a disadvantage when you're doing that. But you can promote your own website and the value that you have on Google ads pretty much in any company. And so that can be a great way to do it. But again, that's going to be an investment in the ads. It's going to be an investment in learning how to do it. Might be partnering or paying someone to help you with it. But certainly it can be done. And I see people that sell well that are doing it. And Joellen is a great example. So that's number one. That's the website. Okay. Number two, and this is probably the one I would say is most common, and that is starting a new business page on Facebook. And so this is, again, naturally when you're deciding to start your network marketing business or you're looking to maybe take it, start treating it like a business, it can be natural to think, oh, I need to start a Facebook business page. And again, I'm not saying that it can't be done because there are even some leaders that focus on teaching this. And there are people who have been able to build a good following doing this, but it's a lot harder than just and when I say harder, more difficult, more challenging to figure out how to grow the following, whereas it's scarier to just put yourself out there to the people who are already following you. So make sure that you're not choosing the business page option out of fear or out of a feeling of, oh, obviously I'm starting a business. I need to do that. That should not be the reason why you should ever start a separate Facebook business page because otherwise you're going to be setting yourself up for failure. But if you maybe have a background in business, maybe you have even some brand partnerships that make sense, or you are willing to really put yourself out there very consistently in a way that uh, Facebook is going to be able to show it to people, then absolutely, you can start a business page. But again, you're going to have to remember two things. You're going to have to think, who is this for? Who's going to click the follow button? Because it's not going to be the 50 friends and family that you invite to like your page right? Like they are doing it because they love you, which I'd rather have them love what you share on your personal page rather than just like your business page. Because if they're not interested or if it doesn't change their their lives in some way, they're not really going to stick around and they're not going to be interested enough. And then that's going to hurt the algorithm and it's going to force you to feel like you're talking to no one. So I see people do this all the time where they'll start a business page and they'll get three likes on their posts and they're confused as to why that's happening. And it's because you're talking to either the people that you invited that joined you or that liked your page just out of the kindness and goodness of their heart, or because you're having a hard time figuring out what's going to make that page grow. And that is, it can be a challenge. But if you choose to do this, you can focus on um, putting your name out there. I would say always put your name, but maybe something a little bit catchy about what it is that sets you apart. So the example that I want to share with you guys of who's doing this really well is Laura Velarde. So she's not on my team, but she is in my company. 
And she is just so inspiring to me because she chose to start a separate business page because her amazing mentor, Marcy Dixon, who's another great friend in the business, she started a business page. So guess what? She duplicated what her mentor did. And she went through a really hard, heartbreaking tragedy in her life. And she chose to make that page her outlet and her kind of distraction to be able to pour her energy into something other than just grieving. And so she showed up, maybe not every day, but multiple times a week, going live, sharing the product, doing her makeup, sharing her heart, sharing her stories. Not necessarily, again, from the place of an online influencer where she's, oh, look at my outfit and look at this product XYZ. She's sharing one product, one, the value of the product, how it's changed her life, how it makes her feel beautiful when her world was crumbling around her. And people re resonated with it. They connected with her on if you want to be like Lara or Marcy and you want to start a separate business page, know that absolutely it totally can be done. And I would follow their leads. I would look at what they're doing and I would just note that success leaves clues. And if you are, if you have someone in your company, maybe it is your mentor, your upline, and they're doing big things on a business page, figure out what's working for them. And I promise you, you can probably do those same steps and you can ask them and just follow their lead. So that's a Facebook business page. And for most people, I recommend just using your personal page if you want to choose the integrate strategy. Okay. Likewise, let's talk about starting a separate Instagram profile or converting your existing one into one that's solely focused on your business. So I actually made, I would call this a mistake when I first started my business. And you know that in talking about all four of these strategies, ignore, integrate, investment, and influencer, I've tried them all at some point in my business. And when I first started my Saint business, I had an Instagram with a pretty good following of my customers for my boutique, my friends and family. But it felt very scary to put myself out there on Instagram with my business. And so I did what a lot of people do. And I started a totally separate one. I remember spending like days agonizing on what to call it. So my other one was my name, Heather K. Burge. I started this one at the time the company was called Mascara. And it was called Mascara Bell, <laughs> B-E-L-E. And I thought it was so clever. And I remember doing where every other post would be a graphic and then one would be my face and then a graphic and my face. And I did like a checkerboard pattern sharing about it. And I tried building a little following over there and I couldn't even get it to come close to what I already had on my other business page. And it was about that time that I attended a leadership retreat and a couple of us leaders, we realized, okay, we need to make ourselves the focus and we just need to talk to whoever, like we need to go the place where there's the most followers. I think at the time I had built that one up to be maybe slightly less than my other one. So I was like, okay, I'll change the name. I changed the name from Mascara Bell to my name, Heather K. Burge, which meant I had to change the name on the other platform. And then I took off honestly doing, I would say a hodgepodge of strategies, everything from integrate to influencer to investment. I was just all over the place on my Instagram. You can go back and look if you go to my Instagram, Heather K. Burge you'll see what I mean. It's a little bit of a hot mess because <laughs> I didn't have a clear strategy. I didn't have a clear focus. So specifically what we're going to talk about is if you should start a separate one, which I would say probably not unless just for some reason, don't again, don't let fear be the thing that's stopping you from putting your information and your product out there on the platform that you already have the followers, even if it's just a couple hundred, okay? definitely start that's the path of least resistance is to put it out there to the people that already know and love you but if for some reason you really are insistent on starting a separate account i would use your name just because that's what people are naturally going to be searching for they might forget or again your company might change the name or now we are not even allowed to use our company name in our instagram handles so for all of those reasons i say use your name in some way that's super searchable regardless because and then also it's even if you're going the you're going the route of the investment versus the influencer strategy on Instagram so again inst influencer would be sharing you all the facets that make you the clothes the vitamins the, the products whatever it is that you love that you're sharing it out there in a way that you're building a following based off of your brand this is focused on your product and this can be a very effective if not probably 
the most duplicatably effective. So I would say in, instead of about 1%, 1 to 2% being able to do the influencer strategy, I'd bump this to about 5% being able to do this well on Instagram. Because anybody, if they have enough practice, can learn to do things like make reels or to get really good lighting by facing like the lighting right here is not so great. But if I walked a little bit 10 feet closer to that window right there and I were to do a video or stories or take a before and after, it would be more effective, right? So you learn more by doing it. And anybody can do that by focusing on their product. Because if you're in a reputable network marketing company that's not a pyramid scheme, you're already focusing on sharing an amazing product and sprinkling in the business side of also sharing that product. But you're by keeping it focused on the, the problems and the value that your product provides. So educating things like in our company with makeup, the contour placement, or how to brighten up the eyes without having the makeup settle into fine lines or wrinkles, or where do you put blush or two-step eyeshadow look. Things like that are very valuable. And if you're an influencer, you can sprinkle those in. If you're going the investment strategy, it can be and just go all out, just literally. Even if it's been done before, don't straight up copy things. I'm not saying to like copy, come up with original ways to create the content around it. But the tips that have worked for like decades when it comes to makeup, like they're all the same regardless of the product. Or again, if you are in health and wellness, things like collagen, they're proven and there's like specific facts. So you just focus on the facts and get really specific on the value that whatever that product is going to, how it's going to serve the people that are following you. And what happens when you do this on Instagram, and so a beautiful example of this would be Leah Buckholtz and Paige Severe. There are two um, great friends in the business that do this really well. And both of them have really polished, beautiful feeds that if you happen to stumble upon one of their reels, or maybe someone sent you one of their reels, because I've even used some of their reels to serve my customers because I know I've built the trust and the relationship with them enough that they'll still order from me, that I can let the amazing value that Leah or Paige are providing for them, I can let that be the third party tool, if you will. And so if someone sends it to you and you click on their profile, you're going to know exactly what you can expect from them. And this is where a lot of people get Instagram and trying to blend all the strategies wrong is if you're all over the place like mine is. What's going to make someone want to click that like button? And they've got like seconds before they decide to do that. And if they like what it is that you have to say in that one piece of content that they found, and then they click into your profile and they see that you've got a bunch of other content that flows right in line with that, they're going to be like, yes, I totally love this. So you can absolutely and should, if you're choosing this strategy, go all in on the value, the education. Even if you repeat, even if you share old content, again, this is not about you. This is about your product. This is about your customer. This is about how you can help them change their lives by what it is that you have to offer. So Instagram, if you're going this strategy, it is going to be a little bit more polished. Like you're going to want to really focus on a really clean, consistent branding with like the layout even of the text on your reels or on your graphics or your carousels which is just a bunch of different graphics that, that help educate your customers right in a row so they can swipe through them, you're going to want these to be really well curated if you're taking this investment strategy because this is more about, again, providing the value of your product and you want the people that find you or stumble across you to know what they're going to get and get addicted to that, that the, of what you're going to get them. And so you can find that on Canva is a great place to start. There's also a ton of different apps you can download if you want really beautiful, branded, consistent content that you can put out there on, on your Instagram. And so again, go follow Paige, go follow Leah if you want to see how this is done really well. And I know Leah grew her following from 700 to, I don't even know, 70,000 or something crazy like that in a month's time by doing this for about two months straight. And some people I've heard say, oh, I'm really consistent on Instagram too. What are you being consistent with? Are you sharing a hodgepodge, like one minute it's like when we talked about Lauren with her ketchup packet, and that was one of her most successful posts. Is it a bunch of ketchup packet posts and posts about your cat? And then you're sprinkling your makeup in there because people don't know what they're going to get with that. But if you're consistently with great lighting, really beautiful, you know, clean, polished branding, if you're consistently providing value for 30, 60, 90 days, and you are hitting that C word, the consistency, mixing it with focusing on what it is that your customer wants to know about what your product is 
you absolutely can crush it on Instagram and you can build a following. And therefore, again, go back to the funnel. You can build a bigger following that's going to whittle down, but also know that it's going to be a little more challenging to make the connections required to take those, those relationships to the next level. So that's Instagram. There's a ton of great content out there on Instagram. Definitely follow Jackie Richards. She is such a great coach and can help you focus on growing your Instagram. And that's actually another beautiful example of the investment strategy, right? That's what she does is she helps other people grow their Instagram following. So definitely there's a lot out there. That one's pretty cut and dry, but hopefully that's a little bit helpful in terms of how you can use your Instagram following as an investment tool to grow your business. Okay, so TikTok is actually similar, but also very different than Instagram. And I'm not on TikTok. I have dabbled in there, probably like you have had the FOMO of, oh, I need to take over TikTok. And so I'm certainly not an expert, but what I know about TikTok is things like messiness or vulnerability or humor mixed in with that consistency piece to where people know what they're going to get when they follow you. That's what people eat up. And you've got seconds to make that impression on them or they're going to swipe right on to the next thing. And for that reason, the content that is on TikTok, it does not have legs. It does not last very long. You don't have more than those like an hour of after posting it for it, the chance of it to take off. So then it's literally like playing a slot machine or playing the lottery. But if you like that sort of thing and you want to give it a shot and have fun with it, go for it. And so what I see working really well in some examples of that would be Mackenzie Fultz. She is a leader on my team who absolutely has blown up. She is or was, I think she's now retiring from it, but she's a private investigator. And so she made episodes on TikTok and Instagram. She did repurpose her content there. But she did episodes on TikTok that says, PI stories I can legally share. And she started at one and she labeled them all. And it wasn't until about maybe 18, something like that, that one of them took off. But guess what happened when it did? People had to go back and watch all the other ones. And then she kept them coming and she kept making them. And she still is still going with that. And so people, once again, like the Instagram business page, they know what to expect. They know they're going to get another episode. They're addicted. They love her. She's fun. She's funny. She's, and I love Mackenzie, but maybe not the most polished, I would say. She's not going to have this beautifully curated anything. You Again, she's got a clear label of like, this is episode 47 of the PI stories I can legally share. And she does share her life and stories and, and some other things along the way. But she built a massive following and therefore built a massive business here as the top record selling team or artist on my team like in the history of my team. She's amazing. And she did it by being very consistent and by giving her customers what they want, which is watching her put on her makeup and sharing PI stories she can legally share. So another example would be Olivia Reeves. She, by trade, is a nurse. And she will literally do her makeup in five seconds in the car getting ready for a shift. And she's only had five minutes to do this. And she's hilarious. Or she has one where she was literally pumping. And like what nursing mom can't relate to that? Like literally pumping someone being cute and hilarious and transform their makeup in minutes, yes, follow. And so if you have that kind of personality where you just let it all hang out, like quite literally sometimes, and maybe you aren't the most polished and you're not that much into creating graphics, but you can consistently create value for your customers and you can, again, be consistent, try it. It could be fun. You could have fun with it. So that's TikTok and that's a couple of examples of people who have done well with that. And then lastly, the investment strategy that I'm going to wrap up with is YouTube. So this is something that I know is getting a lot of, it's got, you know, a lot of traction, a lot of buzzwords going around about YouTube being the next big thing. And it's also the one that I'm choosing to use the investment strategy for myself, for my own personal business. But like with anything, you guys, I'm telling you, you've got to be consistent. You've got to be in it for the long game because I've been doing it since January. So a solid four months now. And I'm just now starting to get maybe one color match per week. So the orders and the business is starting to trickle in, which is great because I know that it works. I know that people are interested in what I have to say. And so what do I need to do? I need to do more of that and get better at it. I can refine the types of content. I can refine the presentation. I can figure it out by learning as I go. But I know I'm committed to doing this for the long run. I know I feel comfortable and I have fun creating the 15 to 20 minute videos talking about anything as it relates to the makeup or the business side of things. And I'm also putting my podcast out there. So again, you might be watching this on YouTube, which hi, <laughs> like, subscribe, follow all the things, but even see that doesn't come naturally to me yet because I don't know the steps like I should, but I've invested in courses 
I am investing in my amazing assistant to help me repurpose some of the content because I'm not, I, I know that I don't like making reels or shorts as they're called on YouTube. And so she's taking my existing content using an app called Descript to literally make multiple shorts, YouTube shorts from the content that I made. So all I'm committing to you is consistently making one video a week and of course one podcast a week. So I guess two pieces of content every single week. And she, I'm investing in her to take that using an app called Descript, which I'm also investing in to repurpose that content to create shorts. Now, as a perfectionist, and that's why I've always struggled with creating content for things like Instagram is I overthink it. I try to make it too polished for that reason. Like I could ever do well on TikTok. I uh, have the same tendencies on YouTube. And so by me delegating this and fully like giving her the reins to be able to be the one to, to do the editing and just marrying the process and divorcing the results, it might be one of the reasons why I'm not necessarily having like a crazy amount of growth over there yet. But we are consistently doing the actions that are building the subscribers. I get five to 10 new subscribers each week, maybe. No, each day, I'd say five, five-ish a day. So what is that, 25 a week? So I can break that math down to figure out exactly what I need to grow. So YouTube can be great if you enjoy creating more long-form content that you can create and repurpose into shorts. You can repurpose content from other places, but know that YouTube prefers like the landscape pictures versus for, for the main videos. Now, they just like TikTok and Instagram prefer the vertical or portrait um, aligned content for that. Something like Descript can help you do both from the same piece of content, which is really cool. So you can repurpose your content. I know some great network marketing leaders who've had success on it on YouTube doing it. But if you really want to build a following, you're going to need to play the YouTube game. And so a couple of people who have done that really well is Amy Darley. I have interviewed her prior on this podcast. She's now a saint artist and doing really great, but her uh, YouTube channel is actually a cleaning channel. So she, her followers know exactly what they're going to get each week, which is a, a, her like cleaning their house with her. So it's kind of like the makeup get ready with her. It's come clean with me <laughs> or organize my garage or my kitchen or whatnot. And she does share additional facets, including the makeup in those videos and the trust that she's built with her massive following of over, I think, 260,000. They love what it is that she has to recommend. Amy Darley would be a great example on YouTube or Sarah Martin. She's the contoured chemist and she also has really great content out there as well. So these are just a few examples of some people who are slaying the investment strategy. And so again, it can be done because, and success does leave clues. So if someone is having a you know great business and growing a business in that way, you can too. But just know that these strategies and these platforms might not be for everyone. And it is challenging. It is hard to focus on building the following required to build the funnel big enough to whittle it down to the, the team and the passive income that comes from happy customers, that come from connections, which you don't have time to do always when you have a big following. So just know that it absolutely can be done. And I really hope and pray that today's episode has been helpful for you in terms of figuring out if the investment strategy is right. And if so, some of the ways that you can do it right. So you guys, I hope this gives you freedom. I hope you have a beautiful week. Make sure to hop on over to the Call to Lead community on Telegram. You can text the word podcast to 912-405-8912 to get a direct link to that. And I can't wait to hear what you guys think about this week's episode and maybe if you're going to dive into one of these strategies for your business. So thank you guys. Have a great week.